Hey everyone, welcome back. As we follow the Spectre team in their 2022 USB-C victory, we're in the quarterfinals right now. This is the sixth segment of their match against the Beatty team. And let's take a look at the hands that we got today. So taking a look at the scorecard here, this was a relatively low scoring segment, only 40 imps in total, and a lot of pushes that I'm seeing. We have a couple of large swings for Spectre and then some smaller swings for the Beatty team. Uh, the first hand that jumps out to me is, oh, oh, look at this, board 26. Wow, both tables ended up defending four spades doubled and over tricks happen. Well, let's save that one for uh, after we take a look at board 17. There's a game swing here. One side got a little too high. So let's take a look at the open room. <clears throat> uh, all right, no one vulnerable. North opens one heart with 15. Great spots, good distribution, the singleton club, all the honors are working. Uh, looks like a good bid. East passes, and this makes a lot of sense to me. I think the hand's just a little too weak for one spade overcall. Having three small hearts in the opponent's suit is really a death trap in a lot of these hands, so distribution's not great. The spade suit is good quality, but we would want a little bit extra, maybe a doubleton heart and maybe queen third in one of the side suits at a bare minimum. So south bids three diamonds, showing a limit raise. I wonder if this could be a three card limit raise, probably not. I think most pairs go through a no trump to show that type of hand these days. So three diamonds, probably a four card limit raise. The hands a little weak, but it may depend on what their alternative agreements could be. If they have no way to show mixed raise, then treating this as a weak hand with, say, bidding two hearts directly is a little underwhelming. <clears throat> uh, I'll just pause. Sorry, I, I hurt my tongue a little bit. I hope it's not affecting the audio. I'm trying to talk through it, but anyway, let's keep moving. So West doubles the three diamond bid. And over a limit raise, normally the double of this kind of auction is lead directing, asking for a diamond lead. That's exactly what West has or wants on this deal. Uh, we had seen previously that over a constructive raise, sometimes players will play double to show a takeout double of openers major. And North opposite a limit raise, of course, bids game, four hearts, Uh, nothing really to say about that. He has a little bit extra, and there's just not enough in his hand where Slam's going to be sensible um, as a contract. I, I suppose South could have had Ace Doubleton of Spades, a Singleton Diamond, but even then, we're still pretty far off from Slam territory. The Queen Jack Ton of Diamonds are not great Slam cards. They're perfectly fine when it comes to game contracts, but when it comes to slam contracts, they just aren't there. All right, the opponents are on opening lead. I respect a diamond lead. I mean, East has no reason to distrust his partner on this auction. And leads the five of diamonds? That's a little weird. I would have expected the nine. I wonder if that's a transcription error or if they actually do lead small from doubletons. I know that's popular among European players, it's not that popular in the Americas, as far as I know. So the five diamonds has led to the king, and well, that was a pretty quick one. Uh, so this is all pretty reasonable. It looks like Declare is claiming on the basis that trumps are not 4-0, and even if they were, he would be able to rough a spade in the dummy. So this is a little bit of shorthand here. Obviously, Declara would need to wait and see if the trump suit did split 4-0, but aside from that, he has two diamonds to lose in the ace of spades, and that's just the end of the hand. Okay, rather quick deal. Let's take a look at what happened at the other table. 
because they got a little bit too high. Aha! We were just talking about this. So north opens a heart, and here south does bid three diamonds, showing a mixed raise, and now west doubles, which is a takeout double of hearts. So note the different choices between um, between the two sides here. In terms of their bidding agreements, I mean, and in terms of South's evaluation of his own hand. Now, I did say that a mixed raise is probably more appropriate, and maybe in the open room, South did not have a mixed raise available, so he was choosing between bidding two hearts, which normally would show three card heart support, a bare minimum response, like six high card points, or a limit raise, which normally would show about 10 to 11 high card points with four trumps. And we're at a complete maximum for the standard raise to two hearts, therefore showing a limit raise makes a little more sense. But when you have mixed raise, which shows about eight to nine with four trumps, that perfectly describes South hand, South's hand. The Queen of Spades is not a great card. It's probably not working all that often opposite our partner's hand. Um, here it does when partner has the spade king, but partner's king could have been in diamonds, and then we would just have two spade losers. The queen would effectively be the same as a small spade. So I like the limit or the mixed race treatment. This allows West to make a takeout double of hearts. So that's what double is. It's not suggesting a diamond lead anymore. He's saying, hey, this might still be our hand. North bids four hearts. East bids four spades. And south passes. I don't think this is a forcing pass type of auction or situation, but it might depend a little on the agreements between the partnerships. I, I believe most players would not treat this as a forcing pass, therefore south pass does not convey anything extra in terms of, for example, wanting to play offense. And north decides to bid for five hearts. Now. I think there are a couple things that pull this hand in two different directions, one being offensive, and that is that North has a singleton club, that's a great offensive asset. North has excellent hearts, which is a good offensive asset, right? The queen of hearts is not going to provide a lot of value on defense, whereas on offense, it may protect against, for example, a jack third of trumps being in someone's hand. Um, but all of these middling honors in the pointed suits, spades and diamonds, the king of spades, the ten of spades, the queen jack, ten of diamonds, these all suggest defense. They don't provide quick tricks, they don't work very well opposite singletons or doubletons in partner's hand on offense, whereas on defense they might just provide a defensive trick. So I think I would prefer to double it is definitely close. It is a close decision, but partner has showed a pretty normal type of hand. I mean, th this is almost what we might expect from partner. Obviously, partner could have stronger diamonds, weaker clubs, which would fit a little better with our hand opposite the singleton club. But for the mixed raise, partner has a smattering of eight to nine high card points somewhere, and he has four hearts. and. Uh, the Queen Jack Ten of Diamonds is really just putting me off from playing offense on this hand. If we need to take a diamond finesse, given that West had make, made the takeout double, West is likely to hold um, diamond honors. Also, I would expect to beat four spades. I don't think that there was any guarantee we were making four hearts, although I would expect that contract to be a favorite. But given that we can kind of guarantee a positive score. I mean, we expect the spade ace to be with West as well, so the king of spades is going to provide some value. Um, yeah, it's a close decision, but I feel like doubling four spades makes a little more sense. Let's take a look at what happened on defense. I imagine it's going to be fairly similar to what happened at the other table. Trump is led. Uh, once East knows that the opponents are in a nine card heart fit, a trump is very safe, and especially because his partner didn't ask for any lead in particular, like a diamond, 
Um, this seems like safety first. Declare wins, leads a spade to the queen, plays the ace of clubs. And at this point, Declare really needs some sort of miracle to happen in the club suit. Like, he's going to need to lead a low club. West is going to have to hop up with the king somehow and then be able to discard his spade losers on the two clubs. He would then need to additionally find a way to collect a diamond trick. The hearts might need to split. Um, because some cross-roughing needs to be done, but yeah, it looks like Declare is doing his best. Unfortunately for him, the club suit does not work out the way he wanted, and the opponents just cash out. There are three tricks. Uh, Declare is continuing to play the sand. I don't really know why. Okay, there we go. North has claimed his ten tricks and one down. So. I guess stepping back, I wonder if uh, I wonder if to, uh, south at the other table. So let's step back here, because we have the same heart three diamonds, but it had different meanings by both partnerships. I wonder if north south here do play some sort of mixed raise, and south just elected to make a limit raise. Um, anyway, I. Interesting hand. Uh, some different systemic choices allowed West to take different actions at both tables, and then the save and four spades, which could have been a bit of a disaster, I think, for East-West, although I, it doesn't look like it's going for too large of a number. Looks like they lose two spades, a heart, a club, maybe a club rough. Um, so maybe 300 uh, is about what we would expect. So the save and four spades is actually quite good, and it was fortunate for West that on for the Spectre team that he was able to make a takeout double of hearts. Let's jump back, and I'm very curious about this hand number 26. So let's take a look in the open room at what happened. Oh. Well, <laughs> I guess this auction is not all that surprising if this is what West's opening hand looks like. Okay, so East is in first seat. Ten high card points, five card major, two tens. I know people, and by I know people I mean I would open the sand of heart, but <laughs> I understand that that's not really the taste of many experts, that they prefer to have a little bit extra in terms of high cards, I mean, on top of what they have here before they open the bidding. Um, South passes, and West in third seat, everyone vulnerable, elects to open four spades. There are obviously options. Four spades is definitely a reasonable one, and I think that would be the choice of a lot of players. When it comes to imps, you tend to want to reach a game that has some potential of making, and you want to do it fairly quickly to keep, stop the opponents from finding their fits and finding good sacrifices, or bidding their own games that could make, or figuring out that they should be doubling you. So Four Spades definitely has that going for it. Opposite a past partner, we would need quite a lot for Slam to be in the picture. I think there are definitely layouts where we could have a grand slam. It would have to be in clubs. Partner would need a long club suit with both minor suit aces and a spade void. But those hands are possible. And if we really wanted to explore for slam on this hand, we would need to open this hand at a lower level with one spade. The benefit is that when we open one spade, we're going to be able to describe our hand, we'll be able to show spades, and then more spades, and then clubs, and then maybe more clubs or more spades, and partner will get a good picture of what's going on. So if partner does have the magical perfect hand, we will reach a slam or even a grand slam, but the 
major downside is that the opponents probably have a fit on this auction. With two passes and we only have nine high card points, North definitely has some values up there. And over a one spade opening bid, if North isn't long in spades, which is unlikely, we have a seven card suit, then North will be able to do something. He'll bid his own suit or make a takeout double, and that can let the opponents realize they have heart fit or a diamond fit, um, or if it turns out that uh, it's not really our hand and partner has nothing in spades and no support for clubs and this is a complete misfit, then when we do get to four spades, the opponents will be able to double us. So going slower has its some advantages and some disadvantages. I think the disadvantages outweigh the advantages here. We can give up on a potential grand slam in clubs to just quickly get to four spades and make the opponents guess. Now North's hand, North has a strong hand, and most people play double here as, well, it's written down as penalty, but realistically, when the opponents open four spades, you're not expected to have a stack of trumps behind them, you're just expected to have values. So South should be taking this out if he has a reasonable suit to do so. Um, we can see here that if South did have a long club suit, then he'd be playing up to the singleton. So that's the you know benefit of preempting with hands like this. When you preempt four spades, the opponents have to guess. And in this case, North guessed to double. Five diamonds is an alternative, but I think the diamond suit is maybe a little too weak, and we really don't know whose hand it is yet. Um, East could have the majority of the missing high cards, like as North, we have 16, but we expect West to have some values, and we don't know whether East or South has the remainder of the high cards. Um, so, you know, five diamonds could go down, and four spades could go down, in which case we want to be defending. Both contracts could make, in which case we would want to bid five diamonds, um, or maybe we bid five diamonds and get doubled and go for a large number when four spades was only giving up 620. Uh, so, okay, North elects to double. Uh, we would need to understand a little bit more about their partnership agreements for North-South as to how often North expects his partner to take this double out, but South with his hand, just a completely balanced hand, and an ace, probably expects to do quite well defending four spades. Okay. So, now here we are, the opening lead I expect is the Ace of Hearts. Ace from Ace King is just the best opening lead in Bridge, you need a very, very strong reason to not make that lead. So, North leads the Ace of Hearts, and this hand does not seem very complicated to me. I would expect, uh, West, well, I expect West to rough the opening lead. And then, huh, I'm not sure how I'd play the hand. Um, there's some potential for taking a spade finesse, which I, I don't think this contract is really ever going to be in jeopardy, but we could say that it is a little safer to lead a low spade to the ace and play a spade back just in case some wild cross roughing starts happening. Um, like, there's some weird potential where Spade Finesse goes to the Singleton King in South's hand, a club comes back, gets roughed, you know, North having a void, and then a diamond goes over to the Ace, and another club gets roughed, and we end up going down in this contract. That's not something we want. Um, so it's definitely a little safer playing a Spade to the Ace. We have the potential to pick up a Singleton King of Spades in either hand as well for the second overtrack, we're of course going to lose a diamond. Um, but yeah, I think taking a spade finesse is also reasonable. We may expect that North holds the spade king for his double, um, which again is penalties. Uh, so West elects to lead the queen of spades, covered to the nine, and a spade comes back. 
and declare now should just be claiming, although there is some argument that a squeeze could take place. He would need to be discarding hearts. Yeah. All right, so declare now runs the clubs and gives up a diamond in the end position. Let's take a look at what happened at the other table. Same exact auction. Once again, East elects not to open a heart, but having watched these guys play a little bit, I know Kevin Bathurst and John Hurd tend to be very solid in their opening bids. They had passed some 11 counts in the previous match. So this hand is probably pretty far away from what they expect for an opening bid. Um, yeah, and once again, North elects to double the four spade bid. So North leads the king of hearts, uh, king from ace king, I guess, in their agreements. And here, declare, it looks like elects to play super safe, leads the four of spades to the ace and plays a spade back. So this is always going to guarantee the contract. Now, after drawing two rounds of trump, even if the opponents get a club rough somehow, they won't be able to defeat the contract. There just aren't enough trumps left out. And he claims 11 tricks. Uh, yeah. Um, so, that's, uh, I guess that's gonna wrap it up for today. Um, a couple of interesting hands. I suppose the auction was more interesting than the play in either one of them. They were kind of just put your hand face up and claim. But yeah, a pretty mellow set, I would say, so far, considering some of the other segments that we've taken a look at. And uh, yeah, so the Spectre team picks up another eight imps. Let's uh, check, okay, scores here. So where have we ended up? It looks like they're about 70 imps ahead right now, maybe 70 or 80 imps ahead with two segments left to play. And we can see on the scorecard that the Beatty team actually withdraws after the seventh segment, but that's gonna do it for today's uh, recap. And tomorrow we'll take a look at the seventh and final segment of this match as Spectre advances to the semifinals. See you then.